Hello, everyone. My name is Charlie Lee. I'm the founder of Trail Daily China. Uh, to be frank, I'm very excited. After more than three years, I come back to Singapore. Also, my first trip in the past uh, three years. Uh, I think China is the largest uh, source market for outbound travel. has changed quite a lot, as many of you already know this in terms of market environment, competition landscape, uh, supply chain, etc. Uh, I re remember in the uh, uh, end of this January, when Su Hong and myself we first talked about this idea of putting together a China-focused event here in Singapore. Actually, both of us realized that a strong demand from both sides for better understand each other after three years of uh, shutting down of the international travel. I believe today is the best chance for all of you to achieve this goal. And also thanks for our sponsors and the partners of making this happen and for your continued support. And uh, also thank you for everyone for attending this conference. Uh, next, uh, I would like to, next session, uh, our speakers from chi two China's leading online trail brands will share their thinking about what has changed, what's not changed over the past three years, and how they have been better prepared for the recovery and the outlook on the future of Chinese as Chinese uh, travel get back on the road. Okay, please join me to welcome our speakers. Come onto the stage, uh, Mr. Bong Shan Che, Managing Director, Vice President, International Market, Trip.com. Thank you. Mr. Dan Xin Chu, Kevin, Managing Director of Head of International Vacation Business. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Chai, well, I think uh, when the first, last time we saw each other, you were with Expedia, yeah? Exactly. And now, in the past two years, it has changed quite a lot. Actually, you have been with uh, Trip.com for around one and a half years, yeah? So what's your feeling of working for a Chinese online trip? How is it different? Uh, <laughs> Easy my, question, yeah? I hope Expedia <laughs> and uh, Trip.com bosses are not here because it's recorded, right? <laughs> uh, I was actually share, sharing a snippet. So first of all, thank you, Charlie, for having me. Uh, I'm very excited because uh, like Siu Hun and Charlie were saying, I think uh, China awakening, China arising is something that I think not just Singapore, I think the whole world is looking for. So I'm happy to be here to share some of the snippets from my perspective. In fact, just now when I came in and I uh, had a chance to you know, bump into Siu Hun, I was sharing with her, she was asking me exactly the same question, what's the difference between Expedia and uh, Trip.com? <laughs> so I'll, I'll give a couple of differences and I think these are all strengths and opportunities for different companies. I think Expedia is a global company, very established, uh, set structures, good, good processes, uh, they really want to conquer the world and I think they have very uh, structured systems that's in place to be able to attract both consumers as well as work with partners like yourself, the hoteliers and all the other travel partners. Uh, very slow and steady but very structured. Trip.com is very adaptive, very customer centric and I think they want to go and execute and get things moving fast but they will iterate along the way. And I'm, I'm sure some of you who are using Trip.com apps, you probably see that constantly on a regular basis, the Trip, the, the trip app is actually always constantly adapting. And I think in, in that way, uh, it's, from my perspective, it's more suitable for Asians. Because I think we are, we are much more fast moving, we are much more uh, adaptive. So when we see new things happening and something that we can do self-service, uh, it's something that's going to be very useful. I'm, I'm not here to sell Trip.com, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I think since Charlie asked me that question, uh, I, think there's, there's a, I think both companies have their strengths and opportunities. What I'm trying to do, I mean, I've been with for 10 over years. What I'm trying to do with Trip is really to try to bring the best of both worlds and hope, hopefully we can offer a really good experience for both our customers and partners like yourself. Okay, thank you very much, Chair. So, Kevin, it's also your first trip to Singapore over the past three years? Yes. So what was the biggest change you feel here? I mean, 
I mean, I, I, can, I can feel the sense of vibrant um, in, in, in Singapore. And uh, for the past three years, um, I, I, I've been in touch with uh, my friends here. And I, I always wanted to, to visit. So I can, I can feel the sense of, uh, of joy uh, reconnecting with, with, with friends here. Okay. Uh, and also here um, uh, at, the, at the scene, I've met some old friends as well. So, um, very interesting experience. Okay, sounds good. Actually, I also had a very good experience over the past the two days since I came to Singapore, but uh, also a very bad experience last night. I totally getting drunk with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> so Soho is quite worried about whether I can speak, still perform better here. And okay, Soho. <laughs> Maybe that helps. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's start. So for the first quarter of 2023, so how have the outbound travel booking? So on your platform, look like any trends that you can share with us, please. Che, please you can start. Uh, so a few things. I think Xu Hun shared some of those data just now. Uh, uh, some of you may recall China announced the border opening on the 26th of September, uh, December, and 8th of January was the first day that uh, the borders were open. So the once the announcement were open, we saw about a three, 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 two hundred and fifty percent growth in terms of outbound travel flight bookings into markets, you know, very similar uh, regions like what Siwa mentioned: Singapore, Korea, Hong Kong, Thailand, and Japan. Uh, between this quarter, from first of January to fifteenth of March, uh, we see outbound travel, especially for flights, continue to increase. I think versus uh, twenty nineteen is about over a thousand percent in terms of. Uh, uh, sorry, against 20, 2022, is over 1,000% in terms of flight bookings. The countries that we are, we are looking at is very similar. is Singapore, again, Thailand, as well as uh, um, Hong Kong, because Hong Kong also announced their uh, border opening. Um, I think one of the things that we want to be also very conscious of is like what uh, Siu Hun mentioned, the flight capacity is still very, very limited. But however, we saw very, very strong demand in terms of bookings, uh, especially when we launched the live show. Uh, in, in mainland China, uh, the Boss Live Show has been something that is very, very familiar with the mainland Chinese since 2020. Because of COVID, you know, many people could not go out, but we Trip.com and Sea Trip as a travel company, we want to continue to stimulate travel in mainland China. So our chairman, James Liang, actually started Boss Live Show in 2020, and it took, in, it took on a lot of uh, attraction and demand, and that was how we were able to sell hotel products for all our, our, a lot of our mainland Chinese hoteliers, and we have actually brought that, brought that also into international markets. In January this year, we started off with Thailand, and we already saw about 6 million GMV in terms of bookings just over a three-hour period when we did the live show. We just did one for Jeju and Korea yesterday, and we continue to do that for different regions. I'll share more details later on uh, when we talk about some of our activities. Okay, thank you. Please. Yeah, just echo a little bit on what Chai said. Um, in, the, in, in this past quarter, we've seen a very strong growth across um, several uh, various categories um, of, of travel, including flights, uh, hotel, room night bookings, uh, and even visa services, uh, for example. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to compete on the numbers, but these numbers are just very, very high. Uh, one thing I would like to mention, though, is uh, uh, around the end of February, we, uh, late February, we saw the need uh, of customer demand increasing so sharply. Uh, the, the fact, what we've observed is that the, the customer uh, that are looking far exceed the customers that are booking. So basically, the, we can see the trend, uh, a, a sharp trend of consumer desire. So in late February, we launched a campaign to promote, to promote uh, outbound travel. And uh, in that campaign, we've sold, uh, so far, I think, more than 200,000 uh, travel products already. Uh, and some of the trends we've seen is, uh, for example, flight ticket packages are very popular. Um, Pre-sale of hotels and resorts are very popular. Uh, theme park related pro products, tickets and packages, which I will probably get into more details later in the conversation, are also very popular. And we've also seen the sales of uh, cruise tours um, uh, jumping up and, uh, and uh, island vacation tours uh, jumping up as well. So. Okay, so let, let, let's talk about the, the consumer behavior. So how has the Chinese traveler changed the, the pre-pandemic and versus post-pandemic? And what you have been doing in terms of uh, in the product design and sourcing, so to adjust to these new changes in consumer preference and market demand. Che? 
Thank you. Yeah, um, so thank you, Charlie, for the question. It's a very interesting and I think a very different question from what we used to get. Uh, because basically in trip.com, we call this trend or these changes, we call it the four S. What are the different in terms of the four S? One is uh, safety. I think the last three years, uh, people are, you know, exposed to virus and COVID. So I think one of the things they're looking for when they travel is making sure that there's good safety. So our advice and our also inputs to our hotel partners is make sure you have sanitizers, make sure you also, you know, message about how you're actually making sure that the, the environment that the travelers are going into are safe for, for travel. So that's the first one. Second is, uh, we, as we call it, short. Meaning that, you know, because flight capacity are still very, very limited, uh, many of our travellers are still waiting till the last minute for more flight capacity to be opened up before they make the travel bookings. So the, the booking window is, getting sh is still short, uh, and I think we expect that to ha still continue to happen until flight capacity starts to really pick up. So that's the second one. Uh, the third one we call it uh, basically is smaller groups, S. Uh, S for smaller groups, meaning that now uh, what, what they want to do is to travel with good friends, with close family members. So our encouragement to our hotel partners is look at, for example, some of your child policy, some of your twin baits, because people are looking to travel with smaller groups, but they still want to be you know, in, in close proximity with some of their close friends and so on. Last but not least, sustainability. You'll be very surprised, I think many of our Gen Z travellers, they are looking for you know, helping the environment and supporting the environment while they travel. One of the recent reports that we did with Accor as well as McKinsey is that you know, if, if travel providers as well as intermediaries like ourselves, if we can actually do our part to support sustainability travel, we can potentially drop our, you know, this uh, environmentally unfriendly uh, ecosystem by about 20%. So in trip.com, we are offering, we are also working with a company called Choose, where we actually offer you know, a customer or traveler to actually go on our site that they can actually choose to reduce emission by paying a slightly extra cost to actually reduce, uh, to be more environment friendly during the uh, travel itself. So these are some of the trends that we're, lo we're looking at in, in trip. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we've seen uh, the trend of increasing, increasingly uh, of, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the user desires and consumer needs getting more and more uh, fragmented. Uh, post COVID, and you know, before COVID, many people decide on their travel with more of a destination-focused approach. First, they decide where to go, and then the rest. But now, people are looking more at um, sort of a experience-centered and uh, uh, and interest-oriented approach. Uh, I will give two kinds of examples. One is people now tend to go to sort of unique uh, destinations. Uh, in our promotion for the for the past month. Um, we've seen people uh, go looking at uh, products like uh, wild animal migration in East Africa, right? Uh, if you think about it, the, the sheer magnificence of, of the scene looking at wild animal migration could be a once-of-a-lifetime opportunity and once-lifetime experience for the users. Uh, and another example is, uh, I don't know if you, you guys probably all know the uh, destination uh, Samporna, right, in Malaysia. And uh, now we have a product of uh, under, uh, like exchanging wedding vows underwater in Samporna. Oh. And uh, actually, I heard from a friend uh, locally uh, that uh, Sam, the word Samporna actually means perfect in local language. So I guess that this is also people's good wish that they are going to have a perfect marriage uh, going forward. Uh, and also we've seen destinations like Nordic areas and Mediterranean areas. And these are just unique you know, destinations that, um, that are less popular before COVID, but now just trending. And second type of examples I would, uh, we've seen is uh, themed and entertainment focused uh, travel. Uh, for example, we've worked with Hong Kong Disneyland on uh, Lina Bell themed uh, products. Okay. You guys probably know Lina Bell is so popular in China, right? And we've launched a product with, that includes park tickets, uh, hotel accommodation, and also Lina Bell uh, themed uh, products like the bed sheets and the, and the, uh, and the, the doll as well. It was so popular and uh, it was sold out within 20 minutes after the sales uh, started. Yes, and um, uh, another example of entertainment focused, uh, I, I don't know if you guys know uh, Leslie Chong, uh, but um, uh, Leslie Chong uh, was a famous um, 
person who has passed away, but uh, it has still a very large fan base in China. Uh, and uh, after uh, ha having this product of Hong Kong hotels uh, combined with Leslie Chang's memorial uh, music concert, uh, that product was also sold out actually within one minute after sales started. Uh, so these are some of the, of the examples like you know, the unique uh, experience that people want and uh, sort of the themed and entertainment focused uh, desire that uh, consumers are looking for. Okay, thank you. So yeah, my next question, let's move to talk to about the, 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 some of the marketing tools, especially the live streaming. Uh, actually, we know Trip.com, your chairman, actually, James Liang, actually is a pioneer in, uh, in the live streaming for, for travel, I should say, yeah? So-called boss live streaming in year 2020, yeah? Actually, he traveled around China, do many, many... Uh, start many, 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 Yeah, <laughs> 200, sorry? Well, yeah, so far, he's done about 100 live shows. Live yeah. shows. Yeah, nice shows. So the, actually, the, the, the impact of the pandemic are gradually fading away. So how will they, this, uh, this marketing technique like uh, live streaming and advanced purchase still be relevant for the travel industry in China? Yeah, so of, of course, like I mentioned just now, we did the first live show on the 11th of January for, Hong, uh, for Thailand. At that time when we did the launch, <coughs> we weren't very sure how the reception will be. Uh, but I can tell you, when we launched the show, it started at 8 p.m. on a Wednesday night. We had, from 8 p.m. to 12, 12 midnight, we had more than 10 to 15 requests for room top-ups from the existing partners who were, doing, who were offering us pre-sale products. Right? And I can say that for the Hong Kong products, I can say that for the Jeju products that we did yesterday, I can say that for the Japan products. So, looks like the demand and the attraction of pre-live or the live shows are still there. I think we will continue to drive it as long as our partners like uh, some, some of you in Singapore or around the world want it and our consumers want it, I think we will continue to drive that. Now, of course, other than live show, uh, I mean, both Kelvin and Charlie, you are pretty familiar with the, with the Chinese consumers. We also do a lot of KOL. We also work with uh, a lot of different social media uh, like WeChat, like uh, you know, Baidu, like some of our... Uh, close you know, partners in, in mainland China or some of the other travel companies to be able to market overseas products to our, our Chinese consumers. And we also do a lot of traditional stuff, even some of the offline advertising you know, on subways, on buses and taxis, we still do that. So I think we are trying to still you know, uh, uh, go across different marketing channels to be able to drive uh, consumer demand into overseas products or overseas hotels. Now, other than that, you know, Trip.com also launched Trip Moments. For some of you who may be use, users of Trip.com app, you will see that actually on, on Trip.com app, we are probably one of the few unique old, uh, international app, you, app companies that actually have user-generated contents, right? where we actually encourage users, travelers, to actually post photos and videos on our app so that they can actually you know, create more attractions as well as demand, as well as information for fellow travelers to be able to you know, participate in the, in the whole travel ecosystem. So that's something that we are also proud of. Uh, on top of that, we have, we also, have, we have also launched TripBest. Uh, TripBest is basically like a list, list of, you know, for example, in Instagrammable hotels in Bangkok or a list of family-friendly properties in, in Hong Kong that we actually have pushed out on our Trip.com app to be able to again feature top hotels or attractive hotels for consumers so that they can actually have a list of hotels they can go after. And we also launched what we call Trip Trend Series, where we actually offer different travel data points, travel information for people who are interested in, in travel to again stimulate travel. So I think we are trying multiple different channels, different ways to actually continue to stimulate travel and, and you know, market our travel products to different consumers. So I can, feel, I can feel actually why you say actually Trip Dalcon is very adaptive to the market change. We try very much. That's why I said, you, you know, at the beginning you asked me about difference between some of these international global companies and Trip. Trip is really trying to be very, very consumer centric. Yeah, sure. Please. Right, great. Um, <coughs> so what we've seen is uh, more and more merchants and uh, travel business owners uh, view live streaming as a very effective tool to acquire business and drive uh, you know, business increase. Um, I think there is a big difference between uh, during the COVID and post-COVID. Uh, I mean, during the COVID, it's, it's more like consumers are looking at uh, live streaming with the hope that they're gonna get a, their dream travel 
uh, when travel restrictions are lifted. Right? For example, we've worked with uh, the Louvre Museum and many of the uh, famous museums just for live streaming. And a lot of people were watching. Yeah. And uh, people also buy pre-sales uh, packages in advance, hoping that when uh, travel restrictions are lifted, they can actually go. Uh, but now, consumers see more and more benefits uh, from live streaming because uh, when they do live stream, watch live stream, uh, they can very easily, uh, in real time, interact with the live streamer, the live stream hosts, to get real time advice and also recommendations. Uh, if you think about it, only a decade ago, many of us would still have to go to an offline uh, travel agency store to find someone to talk to, to consult. But now our consumers can just do all these things online very easily at their fingertips, on mobile, when they're at home, or even on the go. Um, one thing I would also like to mention is consumer psychology. Right? And uh, post-COVID, I think more and more consumers are looking for the emotional value in travel products. Uh, the, if, if, if a travel product can bring sort of emotional comfort to customers, it will be very likely be welcomed. And customers also believe, uh, you know, seeing is believing, right? But, and, and, and live streaming is a very effective tool to showcase how well and, you know, the sort of the, life, uh, the, the emotional value and bring emotional comfort uh, from the travel products uh, to the consumers. Um, also, I would like to mention is um, we have a lot of new merchants uh, doing business on our platform. And uh, live streaming is a very effective way for them to jumpstart a business. Uh, what, uh, many of them are actually new to e-commerce. And uh, live streaming is very effective for them to, to jumpstart uh, their business online. And uh, um, they can work with us, work with Fliggy, to, um, uh, you know, um, and to find the Taobao live streamers. Uh, Taobao Live, which is uh, Alibaba's live streaming platform, uh, has more than 400 million users uh, with over 1 million live streamers. Uh, and Fliggy also has a Fliggy official live streaming service, uh, which is a top, um, you know, one of the top ones on top of life. Um, and we basically, you know, since December, we also basically doubled down on marketing resources that we invest to really help the merchants because many of the merchants were heavily hit and impacted uh, during, during the pandemic, and we really want to help them uh, recover. And I think since then, we have provided more than 1,000 uh, live streaming slots uh, to help these merchants on a commission base. On a commission base. Yeah. Okay, so my next question actually is also re uh, <coughs> related to actually the, the video about stuff. So popular video short platform like Douyin, the TikTok, the Chinese version, is also increasingly investing in travel, and uh, hotel booking services. It's how do you see the potential of competition with this new, this new entrance in the online travel sector? Yeah, I think if, if anyone do not know TikTok, maybe a week or so ago, you probably know them because they had a really good uh, free publicity on a, on a CNN or all over the world, <laughs> right, on news. So, yeah. so I'm sure all of you know about TikTok now. So I think to your question, Charlie, I think competition is great for us. Why? Because it helps us innovate. What we are, why are we here as a travel company and a travel platform is because we want to offer value to our customers and of course make sure that we offer services, the best services to our partners. So when TikTok comes in, I think they are going to come in with a very different way of operation, different, of, different way of attracting customers and of course offering the products to, to the customers. Now Ctrip or Trip.com group has been ex in existence for 20 over years. We are not where we are because we have no competitors. We are here where we are, number one in mainland China, because of competition. And through competition, we innovate. Through competition, we actually add value to our customers, and that's where we are today. So I think we welcome uh, 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 TikTok as a, as a very, very friendly competitor because it also helps us to get better. Now, if you look at Trip.com, recently, I think in February, we actually launched what we call our TripGen Artificial Intelligence, which is also leveraging to on technology to be able to actually offer different value-added services or advices for travelers looking for itineraries or travel products. Again, we are also going to be looking to innovate as much as possible to adapt to the market, adapt to our competitors, and of course, offer the best value to our customers itself. Okay, thank you. 
Yeah, well, uh, while social media is not uh, our main business, but we certainly pay uh, close attention to it. Uh, actually, I think um, I'm glad to see the trending of uh, travel-related contents uh, on, on, on these social media platforms, and I, I think that actually demonstrates um, optimism towards the travel sector. So that's, I think that's, uh, that's actually a good thing. And um, um, I mean, we as a, as a platform, we are open to you know, opportunities on, uh, on, on these new coming you know, uh, trends and, 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 and potentially the, you know, the partners and players. Um, and w one thing I would like to uh, discuss is uh, Fliggy is a travel technology company and we always innovate to create um, differentiated value, right? So one thing that we noticed in the outbound the travel sector is the unit price is relatively high and the decision process is relatively long. So the consumers are really looking for uh, sort of convenience in transaction and the quality in fulfillment. So a lot of our innovations is around reducing the friction uh, in, ter in terms of more convenient um, transaction and uh, higher quality in, in fulfillment. One, one example of that is our cap capability is built around uh, pre-sales packages, what we call yu shou tao san in Mandarin. Yeah. So basically, um, it, it can cover like flight packages, hotel packages, theme park packages, and basically the users can buy the package in advance without specifying the exact date. Uh, and then when, once they decide, they can, uh, because we have in, systemly integrated with many of the partners, uh, usually the users can get on you know, their mobile to uh, s select a specific date um, you know, once they decide. Or if they decide to change travel plans and don't want to use the package, they can just uh, cancel it without, uh, without incurring charges usually. So uh, I think capabilities like this and innovations like this would also help as we collaborate with the social media platforms. Okay, thank you. So my, actually the last question is regarding the globalization. Actually the world is reopening and reconnecting. So how do you plan to expand your uh, presence in the international market? What are the priority for global expansion in the next two years? Yeah, uh, so I think Sea Trip started off as a mainland Chinese company over the last three years. Uh, if you look at the positive side, it actually allowed us to actually expand our international footprints through Trip.com, not just Trip.com, but through also some of our other companies like Skyscanner, uh, Travel Fusion, as well as uh, Travel. Travel basically the flight companies, even you know, some of the Indian companies, I'm not going to name them here, but we are also working very, very closely with them. So in terms of our international footprint, first of all, our motto is always customer first. That's why a lot of the features that we are releasing on the Trip.com app is to make uh, our customer experience as seamless as possible. Whether if, if a customer would like to use our app to actually make cancellations, changes to hotel bookings or flight bookings, they can do so. But we also have a 24 by 7 customer service that is able to actually answer the, the customer's phone as, as soon as possible so that we you know, do not keep our customers on the, on the phone waiting. So that's, I think, the first thing we're trying to do in terms of making sure that we are, we are great around the world. The other thing is, I would say, geographic ex geography expansion. Right? We have been pretty centric if before COVID in mainland China, in Asia Pacific, over the last couple of years, we've also expanded into Middle East as well as Europe. So uh, because of our close uh, partnership with Skyscanner, we are starting to really do a lot of flight and hotel products in Europe. Uh, and we're also expanding our footprint there to really be able to sell hotel products in Europe to be able to, you know, for consumers like, like yourself in Singapore and Asia Pacific itself. So that's a geographic expansion. The third one is the travel products. You know, traditionally, you know, many OTAs, they will start off with hotel and flights. We are actually branching into trains. So if you look at UK, we are already starting trains in, in, in UK. We are looking at expanding to trains in Europe. Uh, we, we are also looking at, you know, KTX in Korea, uh, working with the Japanese, uh, some of the train, train companies to see whether we can offer uh, trains in, in, in Japan itself. So the train products is something that we are looking at. And the other one is some of the tours and activities. And, you know, Calvin mentioned uh, tickets, exhibitions, concerts. You know, we are also going into those areas to, again, offer a one-stop travel product on our app. Uh, 
And I think if some of you go, in, go into our app now and use it, you will see that we already offer a wide range of travel products. We will continue to enhance that. We, have not, uh, been, we are not fully successful in offering all travel products across all regions yet, but it's our ambition to start you know, offering all, all types of travel products on our app for all consumers all around the world. Okay, thanks. Yeah, you know, uh, for Alibaba, the business is global, was global since the, first, since the very beginning of, uh, of its start. And uh, at Fliggy, we also believe the travel business should be a global uh, business. Um, actually, uh, reconnecting with, uh, with friends uh, in the travel sector is the very reason why I'm here this week in Singapore. And uh, in the past uh, couple of months, my colleagues and I have been uh, at fairs and conferences talking to uh, our merchants and partners. Uh, as we started off as a, as a platform, we achieved success through enabling our partners and, uh, and, and, uh, and merchants. And um, uh, many of our merchants, uh, many of the merchants see Fliggy as a gateway to potentially serve the one billion Chinese consumers in the Alibaba ecosystem. And uh, we believe we can achieve uh, success by uh, working very closely with uh, the global partners in uh, popular destinations. Uh, of course, for example, uh, the, the so-called four-hour flight circle destinations are uh, definitely high priority for us, uh, but other destinations like Europe and Middle East are also on our list. Um, and uh, recently, uh, you know, in the, in the past couple of months, we have working, been working very closely with some of our international um, partners, uh, for example, uh, Global Tix and, uh, uh, and Travel Gate X, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And we believe that uh, we, are, we should continue to explore opportunities. And by working with our international partners uh, and players and, and enabling our merchants uh, at a global scale, that it will uh, strengthen uh, our product supply and also will broaden the product offer, offering and better serve uh, our consumers. Okay, so. I know actually Fliggy actually it's, uh, was going independent actually since last year. I mean, so my next question for you is that when are you going to launch an English website? <laughs> well, that's a, that's a very good question. So um, as, as you probably know, uh, the, uh, we have been preparing and, uh, uh, you know, you know, for the, you know, you know, um, for the, for the upgrade and uh, uh, now uh, I think we are, we are at a better position to uh, better serve our clients and uh, uh, strengthen our product offerings and uh, um, so the, the, the recent change that you mentioned is actually very, very good for us. Okay. Uh, as for um, in different language versions, uh, we, we do believe we, we do believe serving a global clientele is an opportunity. Uh, for example, our uh, uh, air ticket uh, business is already on Lazada, okay. uh, serving Southeast Asia consumers, and I think that trend will continue. Uh, yeah, I think you should work more closely with the whole Alibaba ecosystem. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's what. If, we're if you doing. if you need some help, let us know. Because we have done a lot of localization all around the world, and I can tell you, it's not easy. It's not easy. Right. I think. I think. I think. There. Um, you know. Kudos for uh, Trip.com. Right. I think you've done some great work, uh, and okay. uh, I think the travel sector is uh, has a lot of opportunities uh, for us to work in. So. Okay. Both Suhong and me can help you on the marketing and communication side. Okay. Yeah. So my last question was very short answer from both of you. So. So when do you expect the Chinese outbound travel will recover to the pre-pandemic level? Very short answer. We, we are now at about 50%. I think I crossed my fingers end of this year. End of this year. You? Well, it's hard to give a specific date, but I, I think we've seen some categories already recovering close to 2019 levels. We do have high hopes for this summer, but anyway, we should be prepared to boost up our product offerings and, and, and better serve the consumers. Okay, thank you. So actually, uh, both actually Trip.com and also Fliggy, actually they are right now already on the radar, as many under the global travel tour business. Actually, one more thing actually, which I, I feel actually I'm very impressed with over the past three years is that it's a many actually couple of uh, Chinese uh, online travel company. Many of them, many of you actually, actually even don't know their name. But they have been expanding their global business very, very fast. Uh, let me give you a few names like uh, Dida Travel, yeah? 
they are very, it's a China-based uh, uh, hotel consolidator. I mean, actually over the past few years, because they don't have any business from China for outbound travel, but they have been expanding very quickly on cross-border travel for other countries. And the flight consolidator like uh, PK Fair and uh, flight, crew, flight Route 24 and uh, also the Easy Car Rental is also China-based uh, uh, car rental booking platform. All, actually, all these Chinese companies, they have been very, have achieved amazing growth over the past three years for their international business. So actually, this is also a very good sign for the, actually the Chinese technology, travel technology companies have really have the group, great product, great technology, great team in terms of the, to help them to support their international growth. I think this definitely presents amazing opportunity for the global travel community to work with the Chinese company to expand their global footprint. I think that's also an opportunity for, definitely for Chinese company and also for the world. Okay, so thank you very much and uh, thank you for our speaker. Thank you. Thank you.